Hi, I'm Jim Rickers, and thanks for joining me to talk about my new book, Aftermath. This is volume four of an international monetary quartet. You may be familiar with my earlier books, uh, Currency Wars, The Death of Money, The Road to Ruin. Now, Aftermath completes the quartet. And when you think about four books, if you think there's some resemblance to the four horsemen of the apocalypse, you're on the right track. Because we're talking about financial risks, financial apocalypse, major market meltdowns, things that can affect your net worth, uh, your retirement, your wealth preservation. And that's exactly what we discuss in the book. We start out with some behind the scenes look at what goes on inside the CIA in terms of financial threats, including threats from Russia. Obviously, that's a big concern. Uh, talk about how Russia actually acquired a lot of the uranium in the United States uh, and a committee that I was asked to form to look for threats like that and bring in private sector expertise. Uh, we go into that in a lot of detail. But beyond that, uh, chapter by chapter, we look at things that are, should be of great concern to you. Uh, some of them are a little bit technical, but we, we try to do it in a very straightforward way, avoid jargon, uh, just talk in plain English, use metaphors. That's a great way to get the message across. And areas that are of particular interest, talk about the debt and deficits of the United States. Now, everyone knows about it. You hear about it. We have these occasional government shutdowns, et cetera. But I'm not sure how many people realize exactly how threatening it really is. There's, there's a threshold, it's a critical threshold, when your debt to GDP ratio, how much debt do you have relative to how much does the economy produce? 60% you're in the danger zone. But at 90%, when you cross 90%, you actually get to the point where debt is not creating any productivity. Debt is not creating any additional income. It's actually dragging growth down. It's actually slowing growth. Well, that threshold is 90%. Today, the U.S. is at 106%. We're way in the red zone. This is a major problem. Talk about uh, something called choice architecture, behavioral manipulation. How many people realize when you fill out a form that the questions have been designed to get a specific result? Not necessarily in your best interest, but in the best interest of a plan sponsor, or an insurance company, et cetera. To explain this, tell you how to look for that. Also, an area that's definitely of interest to uh, readers is uh, passive investing. Uh, that's uh, you know index funds, ETFs, uh, other types of investment that are not designed to be actively selected, but track the market in a certain way or track a sector of the market. Um, when that started out, it was small relative to the active investors, but now we've reached a tipping point where there are more passive investors than there are active investors. What happens? when there's a market panic or a liquidity crisis and everybody on the passive side goes to sell, who's gonna be there to bid for those stocks and buy them? Well, the answer is probably no one and the market will go straight down. We explain what the danger is there. Also talk about modern monetary theory. That's a new theory, it's actually uh, got its roots over 100 years ago. Uh, but this is the idea that, uh, hey, what's the problem? You know, Green New Deal, infrastructure, uh, Medicare for all, name any program you want and the usual objection is, hey, we can't afford it. Well, the modern monetary theory group says, yes, we can. All we have to do is borrow the money, issue treasury bonds, and the Fed can buy the treasury bonds, monetize the debt, and there's no limit on that. Well, I can tell you, there's no legal limit, but there's a psychological limit. We don't want to find out the hard way when we cross that threshold. Something else to look for that I think readers will be very interested in understanding. Uh, and then finally, it's called the global monetary reset. Will there be a new Bretton Woods? Uh, will President Trump invite President Xi of uh, China and other world leaders to Mar-a-Lago, let's say, to have a new Bretton Woods and think about what the new anchor for the system is? Well, if that's going to happen, and I think it may very well happen, uh, you should know in advance what that anchor is going to be and how you can prepare your portfolio today for that eventuality. And then finally, the aftermath part is what happens if this crisis comes, which I expect it will, maybe sooner than later, maybe sooner than anyone expects. Uh, how do you react to that? What does the world look like when it's over? Is it the end of the world? Uh, does it look like a Mad Max film? Well, no, uh, but it will be a different world, but a world you can't prepare for and you can see coming. One thread that runs throughout the entire book is we tell investors what you can do now to prepare for these outcomes, how you can spot the problems, monitor the problems, see when it's getting worse, but above all, do things today uh, a certain kind of asset class, a certain kind of allocations, so that if and when these more disastrous outcomes happen, you'll be prepared and your wealth will be preserved. I hope you enjoy the book. Thank you.